Hey guys, how you doing? I thought that we would uh, can us some tomatoes. My tomatoes is about had it. I've left them laying too long, and they ain't but one or two that ain't got a bad spot on them. Almost every single one of them's got a bad spot, like that right there. I'm gonna have to, and some of them's got real bad spots, but I don't throw them away till I see if there's anything to save. But now, don't get me wrong, I'm not willing to ruin my tomato juice for a tomato that's got a bad spot on it. But I also am willing to uh, check it out and make sure. And there's my water bath canner I've got. I done had it boiling. This other kettle, it ain't got nothing in it's empty. I'll fill it up with water and bring it to a boil to dip my tomatoes in to skin them. And then I've got this water to cut the bad spots out of, rinse them off, and the smell of them. You'd smell if they've still got any bad in them. And if they do, just, you know, cut till you can't cut or cut till you have to throw it away is how I do it. <clears throat> if you can have all good tomatoes, get them and like that right there. Because that's just surface. That's just on the skin. Don't matter. I'll just, I'll cut it off though. And uh, let's get this show on the road. Let's see now what I need to do first. Let me show you this what I do here. What you'll have to have to can your tomatoes is water bath can or a big old kettle, something you can get the water over them with a couple of inches. You will need tomatoes and lemon juice. 100% real lemon juice, none, none of that fake stuff. And um, that's all you need, jars of course. I've got clean jars back here and I've got clean jars somewhere else. And then here's a bowl that uh, I use. I'll use it to dip my tomatoes out of the boiling water into here. And then uh, I'll get them in jars and whatnot. But right now, you need a good sharp knife too. I'm going to cut out this bad thing. I just had that knife in my hands. I don't know what to do with it. Well, let's get another one. I just figured I'd go ahead and use a tomato knife. This is my apron that my one of my daughters got me for my birthday. It says, uh, happiness is only a cupcake away. It's got a good little pocket on it and covered in cupcakes. Got some uh, frill around it. Pretty, ain't it? Alrighty. Let's work on some of this. I'll cut deep enough that I feel like I get everything it needs out of it and out of it. A lot of times too if you've got a bad spot what it is, it's bad. It that is the juice is stinking down in here, and the tomato's not bad. It's just stinking from the surface bad spot. But I'm still smelling something that smells good, and the tomato looks fantastic out my way, and it feels good too. It's starting to smell better. Let's see now. Hmm. I don't know if I trust my nose today. Might not be a good thing. Let me get that out. That's just surface. And then I'll cut this out. Got to prep them a little bit. It's a little time consuming, but nothing big. And then I just cut the little bottom piece out. And even if they smell good, I smell of, I mean, look good, I smell of them anyway. Because that is a sure far way. You've got every bit of a nose on me. And I'm just cutting this little surface stuff off. That ain't a bad, it ain't a rotten spot or anything. But a lot of times a little spot like that won't come off with the skin and you have to fight it. 
but and the tomatoes hot by then, and I don't want to fight it when it's hot. I'd rather fight it when it's cold any day. So now I'm gonna do this to all of them, the ones that's ain't got nothing wrong with them like these. I'm just go, I'm coring them, and I'm cutting the tip end off the, on the bottom. And I'm cutting down in it to core it you, like that. And then the bottom I'm just cutting off flat. Now, I'll get up here and I'm going to work on all these tomatoes. And what's bad goes in the garbage and what's good goes in the pot. And then I'll bring us back on our next step. And that's when we're going to skin them. All right, thank you. Okay, guys, I got them all cleaned up. There's, there's a bunch of them. I only had to throw one whole tomato away. But now I wanted to show you guys, uh, don't be stingy. You cut off what needs to come off. I mean, like, I just cut and cut and cut. And uh, even when I thought it was down to the good, if I was nervous about a, a seed, I'd either clean that pocket out and smell of it a couple of times, or I would just go ahead and keep cutting. Like right here, I knew this was good tomato. But it don't look, well, no, it ain't either. But uh, anyway, uh, I was trying to see down in here. Like this was terrible. But I cut and cut and cut, and <laughs> there wasn't that much tomato left. But, I mean, it was good tomato, you know. And I cleaned out the seed pocket, so I'm not worried about that. But uh, I've had every tomato in the garden be kind of bad like that. Different years from a blight or whatever. And it not be because time just got away from me which is what happened here but now even a couple of these tomatoes that looked beautiful when i cut the tail end off of them i ran and see there's a little spot of mess but now i know that spot ain't nothing that's surface but uh i ran into some uh uh i guess it's like mold on the inside of the tomato and I went ahead and cut the tomato all to pieces like I did this one right here. I just cut that big old tomato all to pieces. You can see where I cleaned out the pocket. But, uh, mm, ain't nothing wrong with it now. Everything that was uh, in there is gone. And actually, what was in there didn't even smell bad. So, uh, but it was cold black. So I don't know if it was if uh, part of it is blight and part of it just they got old and was starting to rot or what, but they're cleaned up now and they're they're gonna be delicious. And some of them didn't have a thing in the world wrong with. I always cut my core out pretty deep. And then there's the tippy end gown and uh, and there's more than one like that. There there's a bunch of them was perfect. But now they was a bunch of them was it? I've got my water on the boiling on the stove here to uh, skin them, and we're going to do that next. And I'm going to get this out of here and get my trash to all the way up to the end of the road before it gets dark. I'll be back. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get tomatoes and put them in this and I'm going to dip them in that boiling water right there and let them set for a minute or so and then uh, I will uh, get them out a few at a time and just put them in this bowl or something. I got this bowl under because this one's the soft them hot tomatoes. This one's real firm. I can't put them in this one because the bottom leaks but I ain't throwing it away yet. I'm still using it for stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to show you how quick and easy these peel if they don't make a liar out of me. I ain't hardly got my water deep enough. You want to use something to put them in there so you don't get burnt. Let's put a few in there. They need to be submerged. The more I put in there, the higher the water's climbing, so maybe I ain't about to submerge them completely. Let's try one more and see if that does it. No, that still likes a little. Them real big ones. 
for something else. And that's all my little kettle's gonna hold is it right there. So it will or it won't now. Let's put the lid on it. And uh, that will certainly help. And then I'll bring you back here in a second. They're not gonna be in our line one to three minutes about it. Once my, I need to let my water come back to a boil. It don't really have to be boiling, but them skins are kind of tough because they're hothouse tomatoes. They're not, and it does make a difference when hothouse and fresh garden tomatoes, uh, fresh garden tomatoes peel easier. But anyway, I'll bring you back in a minute and show you how easy they peel. And that's just boiling water, nothing in it, and uh, then I'll put them in my bowl. And when I get enough I, to put it in a pan, I'll squish them up to suit myself and uh, get them in the jars. While my water never has boiled, I've got me a big bowl of cold water here. It is not ice water. It's out of the tap. And we're going to see if this, if it's been long enough. It ain't boiled, but now it don't have to boil. It just has to be really, really hot. I mean, boiling helps, but I don't want the tomatoes necessarily to cook any. But let's see. If they do any splitting, we'll get them in here. We'll see if this one's going to peel. Let me pull it back so you can see what I'm working with here. I think it's going to peel. It ain't going to peel like you want it to, though, so. And it needs to get a little hotter. I want it to just slide out. Which it, it's peeling, but I don't want it to peel like that. I want it to be as fast and easy as it can be, but boy, them tomatoes are getting hot. Yeah, it's peeling. Just not just sliding right off like I want it to do. But if you want to maintain the integrity of the tomato like you're going to can whole tomatoes, this might be how you want to do it. Instead of having it too hot toward the tomato cooks any. Because if it cooks in that too much, and a lot of times it will, you know, they you have a time handling them and stuff. Yeah, it's hot enough. It peeled every day and a speck left on it. It's beautiful, but uh, it was awful slow. But we're still going to be working on because we've got a lot to work with. But it'll do, it'll go a lot. And I rotated them once so that, uh, because they're just too big for the, the water's not deep enough. Now that and splitting like you want it to just from the cold air hitting it. See there? And drop her in there. And this one here is ready to get out, and that's what this bowl's for. Okay. And I'll get that one out. Now let me peel this one and see how much faster this goes, because it stayed in there like yeah, that's that's peeling a lot quicker and thinner. See, it ain't bringing out the hide with it. This one here was bringing out the tomato hide with it. Ooh, that one's hot there. Bring off a little bit of hide, but now it's going to, and it don't matter. And especially if you got a lot of tomatoes to work with you, that's your last worry. That one peels a lot quicker. It's smaller, but it's because it got a lot hot. Now let's turn it around and fish us another tomato out. I'm going to flip them over again. Make sure that they... Well, it's easier said than done, ain't it? That goes. And that one's submerged enough, it ought to just skin. Yeah, see, it done split down the side just from the. Can you see it there? From the cool air hitting it. See it there? Well, it's. Ouch! Dipper in water. Boy, she's warm! Let's get a couple of them in that water. Let them do that. And I think I might have missed a bad spot on that tomato. I did. OK. 
cut it out right fast. Here, I'll show it to you. It's hot. See that? Missed a bad spot I'm going to cut out. But I will. I'll cut her out. Now let's fish this one out. Get some more in there. It's starting to split too. Here's one I just cut. <laughs> cut it all to pieces, but all the bads off, and it had little bad spots like that, and I cut them real deep to make sure that there wasn't nothing left what it was. Because sometimes them little bad spots are the world's worst. Here's one. Cut that. Cut it odd, didn't I? But, don't matter. I just want to make sure they're good tomatoes. Let's get them down in there and pop the lid on and be peeling these. Because now, the longer they sit in this water, my water's already starting to get warm. The longer they sit in this water, that skin can firm right back up on them, honey. I've had it do it. And then you have to throw them back in there, which it loosens a lot quicker. But we don't want to uh, plow the same ground twice. Not if we don't have to. Oh, they're peeling good. Even though my water never has had a chance to come to a bowl. Alrighty. This one's got that bad spot on it. Now this one ain't peeling right at all. That one got too cool, or it didn't get hot enough. I don't know which, but I'll peel what I can off of it. Now, you cut that bad spot out. I went ahead and just cut it pretty deep just to just to be sure. Now let's do some peeling here. We're gonna have to re-dip that. And it shouldn't have to stay in there as long as it did while ago. And this water's already got warm. And normally now I'd be working over at the sink, you know, boiling water and pouring it in, but I wanted to show you what I was doing, and it's just too hard to get the camera set up because uh, I've always got two ton of dishes sitting there where I've fooled around dishes all day. I've re dipped this one too. It, it didn't get enough cooking either. Let's see if this one did. Nope. I ain't letting every one of them stay in there long enough except that first one done real good. Or, well, second one did real good. I ain't doing better. Nope. I'll put them back in there. And it could be a matter of this water is just, just about. It's really, really super warm. Cause see the little, the holes hold boiling water in. Let me strain some of this out of here. Well, no, I ain't worried about that. Let me get out the tomatoes that I reached stuck in there and I'm gonna get them in here. And then you see what I'm doing. I'm peeling the tomatoes and I'll probably move to the sink and uh, go ahead and get it done. And uh, I said I was going to put them in jars, but I'm not. I told you wrong. It ain't time for the jars yet. All right. Thank you. We'll be back. Hey, guys. I'm back. I am uh, filling the rest of them. Well, I throw water all over the kitchen. Uh, 
rest of them tomatoes, I finally found my plot. I didn't find it. James found it. Uh, but, uh, I'm working on getting ready to start peeling my tomatoes. Let's see if they're ready. Yep, they're ready to peel. Just about. They're the toughest tomatoes I ever seen to peel. But I'm going to get me a sink full of water over here. And, uh, these have been in the refrigerator, so they're going to, they're cold. Partly froze. So they're going to be just all kinds of fun to work with. I'll never be able to keep my water boiling. But we will persevere and we'll get these canned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, pressure can them. And I'm going to show you how to water bath can them. I'm going to show you how I do it both ways. And then you all can decide whatever is good for you. Because not everybody's got a pressure canner. And uh, then you know I had a time getting my hands on a water bath canner. And then I found mine. So, uh, well, these tomatoes are just, this one's frozen ice. Yeah, I'm going to have a time. But, well, it is what it is. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing good today. I had a good day at work. I worked awful hard, but I still had a great day. And uh, I got my tomatoes in this big pot of boiling. Right there. And I'm gonna get them in here, and then I'm gonna get them over here in the sink. And as cold water as my taps got, because I don't have no nothing to make ice. I've never done ice bath anyway. In my whole life. But, uh, I'm emptying the water out of these jars. I just, uh, they was clean, but I rewashed them again. And I'm going to get them up here out of the way. See here? Got three, four, six, seven big, pretty clean jars. And they're all wide mouth, but one. And uh, get me some cold water in my sink and get that stopped up and get this a going and then i'll come back and we will uh sock and wet i want you to look then we will um get some water bathing and we'll get some pressure canning all right i'll see you in a few thank you hi guys um i wanted to show you now as I'm getting them out of the boiling water, I'm putting them in that kettle of cold water, and I'm peeling them, and I'm putting them in another pan here. Now, these are peeled, and what I do is now, you know, I've not had this too long. I like to use my hands, and, but I wanted to try this and see, oh, it's going to be excellent. Oh, my goodness. Look how good that's doing with that tomato because uh, look at that look at that juice coming out there and then after I get them squished up like that I ain't got enough room in here after I get them squished up I like to uh, well no I don't like to I mean I, I'm going to cook them and I would just went through that tomato like butter and uh, after I let me see if I can get that camera to be a little bit more agreeable with me. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's better. Um, after I get my tomatoes tore up, and I, this is how I like to do mine. I have always done it with my hands. But this is handy as I'll get out right here. And uh, then I... Get it, bring them to a boil, and I cook them. Look at there. It just goes through that like it ain't nothing. Watch that. Just cuts. I mean, it just barely touching right through. It's going wood. I cook them for a little while. But look at that. Now, I don't add no water to my tomatoes. Now, if I've got a the very last jar, I might need a little dab to finish it up to a pint or a quart, I will. 
But other than that, I don't never add nothing to my tomatoes except for some uh, lemon juice and some salt if I want to. And I usually do. And, but now sometimes I don't. It don't matter more salad when I cook with them. But the lemon juice is a must because it puts the acid back in them. And a lot of people say, well, I can for 40 years. I've never put nothing in <coughs> And that's fine. The, you know, your kitchen, your rules, my kitchen, my rules. But uh, hybrid tomatoes are different. They, they just don't act like the heirloom tomatoes, like the stuff that we grew up with or even people older than I am so, that are still can. So uh, uh, I just go ahead and do it just to be on the safe side because I'm afraid that they don't have enough, enough natural acid. So uh, I do that. It does not have any impact whatsoever on the flavor. And I don't have to worry about maybe having a bad jar of tomatoes unless I didn't do something right in the canning process. And uh, hopefully we won't have a situation like that. But anyhow, look at that juice, how deep and red and pretty. And I don't take the seeds out of mine either. I like mine just like this. This is how I grew up with when you sat down to a big bowl of macaroni and tomato juice. It had the pulp and the seeds and, and it had everything in it and it was so dad burn yummy but uh i quit preaching now and let me uh see if these this other batch of tomatoes is boiling yet yep they're boiling and they're ready i believe to take out and put in and now i could have these uh, bubbling on the stove while i'm doing that and i probably should but I'm afraid I'll get distracted and let them burn. So I'll probably just wait and put them all on one whack. All right, I'll be back. Thank you. Okay, guys. I finally got all them tomatoes. Or, uh, I didn't get them all squished up. So let me do that right quick. I have got... This comes when I get it all in my pot. It's a little over a half of... In, in the big blue pot. It's a little over half of a pot. And uh, that's all I got. That's all I'm canning until I can get my hands on some more tomatoes. I stopped on the way home. I'll go and talk to a girl that I get a lot of stuff off of. And she only had yellow tomatoes. I started by some. And I said, well, I'll wait because she said she thought she'd get some more red ones tomorrow. And, uh, now, the yellow ones don't have it. They're not acidic enough, so you you got to add some lemon juice. I'm, I know people's going to fuss say, no, you don't, but I do. But um, I will, they have a different taste. To me, they do anyway. It might be in my head, but it feels to me like it's in my mouth. <laughs> but anywho, I like to, uh, if, I, if I've not, if I've got, say, half as many yellow ones as red ones, I'll mix them right in here. And then I'll can the yellow ones by themselves. But now they're not pretty in macaroni. They're just, they're just not. It ain't the same. You know how your mind is. Your mind says, uh-uh, ain't going to do it. But, uh, so I'll mix them with my red ones. Uh, and, uh, I am going to get these dumped in that big pot and get them going. And what I need to do now is bring them to a boil and let them boil five minutes. And then uh, I'll get them in my jars and then we'll get them in the canner and we'll get them in the water bath canner. And now the reason I was looking so hard for a water bath canner is because uh, I didn't have a pot, any kind of pot of work, but I didn't have one big enough to uh, water bath can them in. And I never thought about using my dad burn canner. Till just now. <laughs> they ain't nothing in my head that needs to be there when I need it to be there. I don't know where it's at. Gone, gone off and running. <laughs> I can't believe I never thought of that big dad burn canning pot. Lord have mercy. Anywho. Hey lordy. But now I won't... Uh, I want to cook them in this because it's that porcelain, that speckledy stuff. Because now I'm not going to cook my tomatoes in aluminum. A lot of people do, but I don't want to. So uh, I'm going to get them in that pot and get this in the sink and get. 
I'm getting ready to I probably better. Well, I'll try it. I sure hope I don't splash this everywhere. But I've got... Oh, please don't make a mess. I made a mess. At might or dip them out. I'm making... I'm making a mess. Whew. Let's dip them out, I reckon. Surely I got something to dip with. Well, this old bowl will work. It's cracked on the bottom, but that don't matter. Let me wash my hands a little bit. Let me wash my hands a little bit. All right. I'm sorry. I keep... Wandering out. Uh, boy, ain't them pretty. Well, they're cold. Where they've been in that refrigerator. I've got to clean the bottom of my kettle off. I think I set it down where I spilled all them tomatoes right there a second ago. Ooh, that's cold. Now, the rest of it, I think I can... Surely I can pour in the rest of it. Surely I can. Yep. This old pot looks bad, but uh, this old pot does a lot of work around here. Now let me wipe off my... Put that in the floor. I'm sorry, guys. I got to... Do a little of uh, damage control here. Cause I got them miters on the bottom of my pot and I don't wanna I don't want all that going on in in the uh under my kettle burning. Right. Watch me throw it right in the floor. I just get my car drive out. If I dump that in the floor, I ain't done it. So you have to <laughs> learn to love maters, all I know, tell him, because I don't, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't handle it. But anyway, let me get the stove on. All right, we got her on high drive. And I had these other two jars full that wouldn't fit in my kittle. And I was afraid that my shelf in my fridge was gonna bite the dirt. Boy, that would have been, oh lord, that would have been bad. I'd rather it hit the floor than, than the shelf cave in there, cause if it, had, if it had caved in the refrigerator, it would have been refrigerator floor and everything anyway. It would have still been the floor. I don't want to talk about that anymore. All right, let's get these bad boys. Where's my lid? It's untelling. That lid fits just fine. I don't, I don't know where my lid is. I don't know where nothing's at. I never know nothing. <laughs> I spilled that on them clean jars and everything. Shh. Now, I'm not going to keep you in zone here. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stand right here and stir on these on and off until they come to a boil, and once they come to a boil, now I will stir them right on for the whole five minutes. I won't turn my back on them because I've got too much work in them. Let me see my belly button. I'm like a Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've done, got too much time and work invested in them to burn them down and scorch them. But if you ever, and yes, I learned this the hard way, it's just like when I was talking about burning my soup beans. If you ever do scorch your tomatoes, if you don't dig down in that now while you're stirring, you can still can your tomatoes and go right out. But now if you stir in that mess and get it stirred up and mixed up with the rest of your tomatoes, there'll be black specks in them, yum, yum. But if you don't stir in it and fool with it and transfer it into another kettle or just, if you just got a minute or something left, finish cooking them in that and it don't, hurt the rest of the batch. Believe it or not, it don't. Alright, I'll be back. 
Thank y'all for bearing with me. Hey guys, um, my tomatoes are about to boil. Let me show them to you. Well, if I, there you go. You can see that they're about to boil. Once they start, I'll let them boil for five minutes. And I've got my, uh, let me, I've got my pressure canner out. And I wanted to show you what you do to close it. Is you line up this V with that V and settle it down like it just did. And then you turn it to close it. You need your rackets in there to keep the jars from being on the bottom. And uh, I want to show you this. This is the, uh, I got my lids and rings ready. And uh, I've got my other, I'll get these in the jar and then I'll get my clean water bath canner. Now let me show you about this weight. It goes with the pressure canner. This weight is, uh, comes apart. And I'm not going to use a gauge. I'm going to use this. That's five pounds pressure, and it's built on to it. Each one of these are five pounds, so this would be uh, 10 pounds and 15 pounds. But for where I'm at, a uh, thousand feet above sea level, I guess, how they, elevation is how they figure that. Anyway, I'm a thousand feet and under around here, a thousand feet, so I'll use 10 pounds, and whenever I get ready to put jars in this canner, and my jar calls, I mean, my canner calls for three quarts of boiling water and the seven jars. And even if I don't have seven jars worth of tomato juice, I probably ain't gonna have since I'm gonna do it both ways to show you how. Uh, then I'll just fill up empty jars of, of full of water and put them in there and it'll give it its same everything and it won't hurt them empty jars but uh, I was trying to think is there anything else I left out I just don't believe so okay the five minutes is up I'm gonna get my burner out and I've been a stirring and uh, I'm going to show you what we got here. Feed that lid. Uh, that's heavy. And there's my maters. All cooked up. See? This kettle's a little over half full. It likes about an inch being up to, uh, it likes about an inch being up to that top ring, I think. Something like that, about like that. So it's about half full. I said a little over half, but I don't think so now that I've looked at it good. All right. Now, I've got my uh, pressure canner uh, going back here with the, just to keep it hot, I've, I need to turn it on low. Just to keep my water boiling. Um, it's got three quarts of water in it like it's asked for. And before I forget, I'm going to show you. Uh, so your jars don't get that white look on You can't wash it off. It's calcium from canning. And you can put uh, two or three tablespoons of vinegar in your pot and it, it, they won't do that. So let's do that real quick. That look good. All right, let's leave it doing its thing. And now, well, drop every lid a touch. I chase a pop lid, I lay light. <laughs> now I need to, I should have been ready. I ain't never ready. I got me a bowl to dip with here. Let me uh, get my drawers a little bit out of my way. Probably need something to uh, set the jar. Here, let me get a dish towel. This apron work just fine for what I'm going to do. That's to catch any kind of big old messes I start to make. Here's my dipper. 
literally a, a old dipper. I got the bucket that matches this. It ain't got the bell on it. I didn't have the bell on it when I got it. I'd give anything if it had the bell on it. But I'm pretty sure I got another one there somewhere. But anyway, let's get this out of there. This is what I stirred with the whole time. And it's stainless steel, so it will be fine. Oh, but do me no good to have a new kittle. Look at me. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> I just tell you, if I can't use it, I ain't got no business on in it. Now, here is my clean jars. And I'm going to put me two tablespoons of lemon juice. That's 100% real lemon juice. You don't want none of that fake junk. I know I said that, but I'll reiterate. And you can or cannot put your pickling salt in them if you want to. And since I've had it laying here under my nose, I might as well. Just get it wiped out. And normally now, see, I'd put it in my, well, I ain't going to put it in a few jars, but I ain't got very much, so I don't know how many jars I'm going to have. Uh, let me get me a tablespoon, and let me get me a teaspoon. I ain't a teaspoon, that's a tablespoon. Let's see. Give me a little teaspoon, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, Push this up a little bit. I'm going to get my lemon juice in a few jars. And I'm going to put two tablespoons in that jar right there. And I ain't got nothing special to measure with. I don't need it. That's an awful... Whew! Just spilled lemon juice everywhere. That's an awful big tablespoon. That's probably one of the old-fashioned ones that's a two tablespooners, really. All right, there's one. And two. Now let's get me a teaspoon of my salt. And that lemon does not affect the taste of your tomatoes, tomato juice, and there's my teaspoon of salt. I get it in there. I like to put it all in the bottom. That way when you get you start dumping your motor stuff in it disperses it for you. Now let me do a few more jars. Let's start filling up these jars. And you want to leave a half inch head space. And uh, my jars got just about whole tomatoes, got the juice, got the seeds. It ain't got fillings in though. I've I, did, I ain't never tried it because I was afraid of wasting my motors. I tried somebody else's that had done it that way. Some people say they don't mind, they can't taste it. Boy, I could. I hated it. I said, well, I'll know never to do that. So, that's seven quarts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's get them in our canner. Pretty. Man, oh man, I ain't took the lid out. Alright, All right, let's get her in there. I can't put that in there. Well, let's get them in the water bath canner then. Ouch. I wasn't thinking that that ring thing. <laughs> More than one way to skin a cat, ain't they? There we go. Let's get them in there. One. Two. Don't ask me why I like to count out loud, but I do. Three. Four. A 
lay it on here to get this fine going so it can vent out. Start gets a good steady stream of uh, steam. After it gets a good steady stream, then we let it vent for ten minutes. Then we get a weight on it and put it on high till it gets to going a good jiggle. Then we turn it down to where it'll be an easy jiggle in fifteen minutes. Then it's done. So let's get some more jars filled up. I ain't got no more wide mouse ready. I don't believe they're down in the building and. I ain't going down there after them. I'll be back in a minute. Let me get this mess set up because I know you're sick to death of me. Hold on. Okay, I, I've got seven quarts in the pressure canner and it's trying to build steam. And I've managed to get three full quarts for the water bath canner. And then here is how much I like being to the top of a quart jar, and I'm going to go ahead and fill, put water in it, like I said I would, because uh, this is so super concentrated and full of them big old tomatoes, this jar, all these jars are, that uh, it'll be all right. Won't hurt it. And that's the only time you'll ever see me add water. And I thought about taking it out and putting it in a pint, but it would have been too much for a pint, not enough for a quart, and I ain't wasting it. So I put her in the quart and fill her on up the water, and it'll be, oh, about had that in two times. It'll be, and they've all got the salt and whatnot in them. And now let me get me some jars and fill them up to, uh, Make it be okay and get rid of some gifts in that water bath can. That's four. And here's three more. I need to get hot water in them. And then I'm just going to take that lid off of this one and uh, ouch. Add them jars to it, and uh, and it's on already. I got the water boiling, been boiling for a while. All right, I'll be back in a few. Thank you. Okay, you see my jars with the water, and they don't have to be full. Just make sure you know my jars don't break and whatnot. And I'm getting ready to put these in the water bath can. It's going strong over there. Add a little bit more water to it. Definitely. Let's get this down in there. And why don't you sit? That's an old canner. It uses a smaller. Mine must be a tad bigger. Let's transfer them over and get them in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's get 
to add some more water. Alrighty. We'll be back. Thank you. I'm waiting on that to do its steam thing. And then I can put the gauge on it. Alright, I'll be back. Or the... Hey guys, it has been longer than 40 minutes. I've got both burners off. And I'm waiting on the pressure counter to finish cooling. It has to cool off or I can do anything with it. And the water bath canner <coughs> is done. And I'm going to get them out. Show we got what we got here. Is that not positively beautiful? Look at that. See, right there. Here's the one that was that I put some water in. That don't hurt it. There's still, like I said, plenty tomatoes in there to make it just fine. They're still boiling. Anything over 40 minutes is fine. Just don't let your counter boil dry, which I keep the lid on mine. But uh, I forgot to put in vinegar in that counter. But anyway. Um, as long as you get that 40 minutes and don't let your canner boil dry. Now see that, I don't know if you can see it or not, the white on the jar. See if you can see it. Right, yeah, you can see it right there. Right there. That is on the outside of the jar. That's from not adding any vinegar to that canner, and that's calcium and whatnot. See it on this jar? And that, it is what it is. I didn't have enough water in it, and I turned it on and went outside, got fiddling around, had to come back and add more water, but I didn't ever think of the vinegar. And I only had four jars of actual tomatoes in the water bath canner. The rest of them are in that other one. And no, it's not been cooking all this time. It only went, I well, probably pressure about 20 minutes or a little bit better probably. But like I said, I got outside and got to fit them. But um, I have to wait till it cools down. I can't do nothing with it till it does. But they are gonna be Ooh, them hot. Beautiful. I'm going to throw that little apron over them. I don't like them to sit with this. Ooh, it vents cold coming up through there. And then I'll get them out. And that'll be the finished product. Um, now, what you do on your canner is you get it locked down the way it should. Don't put your diddler on yet. You let it steam until it's got a steady stream of steam coming out that hole here in the middle where your weight sits, and then you put your, drop your weight on it, you jiggler, diddler, whatever, and once it gets to jiggling good, then you start turning your heat down to get it at a at an easy jiggle because uh, more steam it lets out, more after you burn, run your canner dry, which them's just supposed to be canned 15 minutes. That ain't going to happen that quick. But you just need to be in a good habit of that because if you can like them soap beans I can, that's 90 minutes. And your canner can sure run dry. If it does, it's definitely going to warp it and won't be able to use it again. But anyway, I've got it off and I'm just waiting on it to cool now. And when it does, cool enough that I know that there ain't no pressure on it and I can uh, open it, I will. Well... I don't believe there's none on it now. We'll see. Yeah, there we go. That worked out just in time, didn't it? 
So let's get that lid off then. It's hot. turn away from yourself. Now let's get them jars out. And set them right over here with these. Oh, look at them boiling. Buddy, they're getting with it. Can you see them bowling? Let me. They are bowling away. Gosh, oh, they're, they're, I mean, dude, they're balling. This other dish towel and put down there to set these other couple of jars on. Look at it bowl. Well, I don't know if you can see it or not. We got 11 quarts out of that. That ain't too awful bad. And um, I hope I helped you in some. 40 minutes for quarts and a pressure canner. And uh, 30, or no, 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 no. 15 minutes at 10 pound pressure in a pressure canner. 40 minutes in a hot water in a water bath canner and i've done both and uh they're just alike and i'll take the rings off of them tomorrow and they will be should be absolutely scrumptious this one right here is still just i mean to tell you it's boiling like mad look at that that's get hot on my finger all right i'm gonna cover them up and I appreciate you and everyone and everything that you say and everything that you do and what wonderful folks you all are. And I hope I've helped you a little bit. And there's my tomato juice. Until next time. Thank you.